Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. About a year ago, I didn't think it was a good idea for Freddie Kitchens to be the head coach of the team and to be the offensive coordinator and play callers. Apparently, John Dorsey didn't agree with that. And despite what the powers to be said at the time, when they wanted to hire Freddie before some other team got him, I don't think that's true either. What's even stranger is that Dorsey would risk his own career by joining Freddie Kitchens at the hip. And now Freddie will probably never be a head coach again, and, uh, and if the pressure will be on Dorsey because without a playoff appearance in this coming season, you can assume that he will probably join Freddie not on the sidelines but off of them. We've got the D-man, Dennis Maniloff. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. Browns just need an adult, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really what they need. Like, <laughs> at this point, it's like when you and your siblings were home and your mom would go away for a couple of days, leave you with your dad. She'd come home, open the door. Nobody would have their pants on. There'd be cereal on the floor. <laughs> that is what happened to the Browns this season. They just need someone to come in, clean up, be an adult, fix the culture. Because the talent is there. It's actually a very attractive job. Yeah, it's the Cleveland Browns are going to be giving Baker Mayfield his third playbook, and his third head coach in three years. There was a sportscaster nationally that took a lot of flack when he said Baker's not a number one pick, Freddie Kitchens is a ridiculous head coaching hire, and Baker is not talented enough to overcome the dysfunction he will inherit in Cleveland. Oh, wait, that was me. Um, here's the problem. Go ahead, fire Freddie Kitchens, but the best candidates, Ron Rivera... Not interested. He'll take the Washington job today. Lincoln Riley, Urban Meyer, sources tell me neither's interested. Urban would listen to the Cowboys. And Matt Rule already came out through a source at another network and said, I'm not interested. That leaves you with two legitimate candidates, neither a great candidate. There's the kid named Josh McDaniels in New England who's never won without Brady and was a disaster in Cleveland, uh, in Denver. And there's Mike McCarthy, Green Bay's winning more without him. And that's the problem when you fire coaches one after another after another. The message is don't take the job. Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens was clearly in over his head. But I think on this particular day, Max, we should actually feel sorry for him. He's not a leader of men, but it's because he simply wasn't ready to go from a positional coach to a coordinator's position to a head coaching position all inside of eight months. It's just unheard of on the National Football League. But he was elevated to that position, and obviously it was an opportunity that he could not turn down. But he wasn't ready. This is a guy to me that could have been successful as the offensive coordinator for a few years in Cleveland before he got this job. But because of Baker Mayfield's insistence to some degree and Dorsey capitulating to it, it ended up ruining the Brown season. A lot of people were calling the Brown Super Bowl contenders. If you recall, Max, I questioned whether or not they would make the postseason. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. I feel bad for Freddie Kitchens because he wasn't ready to be a head coach. But I I'm sorry that he got fired because he was just promoted a bit too prematurely. From the Worldwide Headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday night. It's our final show of this uh, calendar year, the end of uh, December. Welcome to More Sports and Less Levine into its 24th consecutive season or 24th year. We'll haggle that out with the D-man, Dennis Maniloff. <laughs> if, if it's 24 years or 20, into the 24th year or whatever. Well, it seems like 24 years, every 20, every 24, every year of the 24, the Cleveland Browns are looking for a new head coach. Dennis Maniloff of, of uh, WTAM Radio. See, this This is the uh, new coaching hire beard. I'm not going to shave until they hire a new coach. Well, I lost mine. Yeah, I, you shouldn't have because I loved <laughs> your uh, your beard. Uh, you know, it, it's good that Brian and, and Alex queued up the national montage. I like Mina Kimes talking about you know her analogy of the, the room with the, you know, all chaotic, the cereal on the floor and everything else, uh, as what the Browns were doing in, in 19. 
And of course, Coward is going to crow because he did say sure. that he thought Kitchens was a bad hire, and he's been all over Mayfield as we as we know. But I do take issue with with uh, Coward on one thing, where he says coaches don't want to come here because of all the firings. If I'm a really good coach, Bring I on. I look at the t- the coaches who were fired by the Haslam's by this ownership, and I say. Have any of those guys gone on to do great things? The answer is no. They have not as head coaches, okay? So if that's the case and I believe in my ability to coach, it doesn't matter how many coaches have been fired by and, the Haslam's you, because I think that's it's going to end with me. Right. And you look at the talent that you believe there is on that on the roster. You say it makes it easy. It's, it's really an attractive job for that reason. First of all, you're exactly right. Coward's talking about the fact that they hire, they fire people all the time, and uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith said the same thing. Not if you're good, they won't hire. They won't well, fire. Well, that's the, that's the thing. We said in the pre-show meeting last, the Haslam's have been abysmal, and ownership since '99 has been abysmal in hiring coaches. But and I know you can snicker at this comment, but by and large. They've been good at firing coaches, meaning not not just firing them as in volume, but none of the coaches fired by the Browns since 99 has gone on to do anything as a head coach, to my knowledge. Well, Shermer got the job, but he got fired today. Well, Shermer went back-to-back 9-23s and 23s yeah. with the Browns and the Giants. Right. So he's had two disastrous uh, head coaching stints. Well, and and Shermer is an argument against continuity for continuity's sake. Two franchises did it with Shermer, and they both lived to regret it. Continuity doesn't mean it's going to be a good thing to keep him. You could have continuity, and it gets worse. Exactly. Hugh Jackson. And then you also can look at first-year head coaches, and you know with the eye test that that they deserve longer. For example, Brian Flores of the Dolphins. Flores from the Belichick right. tree takes over a team that was originally tanking for Tua. Correct. Remember, they got their doors blown off by the Ravens in the first game. He had them playing so well at the end of the year, they went into Foxborough and beat the Patriots it, when the Patriots needed the game yeah. for a bye. Absolutely. And they're, the, his team finished 5-11. and 11. That's a team you watch and you go, Brian Flores is a guy I want to invest in. Whereas on the opposite side of that, a first-year coach like Freddie Kitchen, who, Kitchens, who was a train wreck. Do you agree with what I said in the opening comment that not only was it a questionable hire, but to, there was no reason you had to give him the play-calling ability here? Uh, yeah, I mean, in retrospect, everything, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and all that. We can all say, oh, look at this, look at that. But even during the season, we were saying, even those of us who advocated for Kitchens to take, you know, to have a shot, you know, to, uh, that – I was saying, go ahead and gamble on Kitchens, see what happens. Um, but we were saying along the way, hey, he's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. He's right. overwhelmed. One way to get uh, to rid yourself of some of that burden is to offload the play calling. And you had an established OC in your building in Todd Munkin. But, ta- but uh, Freddie Kitchens, right to the end, refused to do it. Remember, he was asked Friday, entering was asked the last game, would you give him up? He said there's no reason to do that. No. Once you give him up, you give him up. He was so stubborn, and some would say arrogant, he believed not only that he could do it all the way through week 16 or week 17, but he didn't think anything of his job being in jeopardy no. when let, he let, left let's uh, go, Cincinnati. Let's go further back where, where uh, Dorsey actually said that one of the reasons he picked uh, that he picked Freddie Kitchens was his play calling ability in the fourth exhibition game of last year. That's if that's true, that that's a, that's should be an indictment about on uh, Dorsey. Yeah, it makes you nervous a little bit. Um, you know, John Dorsey is not a guy who is bulletproof anymore. You right. know, he's got some uh, uh, some warts. Yeah. Uh, and, as- and you wonder if the John Carroll New England tree comes in here, what that means for Dorsey because there's no. No love lost between those two groups, I would think. Now, from the other side, D. Podesta, Paul D. Podesta apparently getting more uh, uh, d- power in the organization. This doesn't bode well at all. 
No, it, it, it's very complicated. Uh, you know, Dustin Fox, your colleague over at 92.3, flat out said on the radio today, and he, I trust him here because he was so uh, adamant when he said it. If McDaniels were to agree to come here, John Dorsey is pretty much out as GM because uh, McDaniels is going to want his own power structure. Sure, sure. Uh, so, and we know the Haslam's have liked McDaniels. I don't. I don't trust McDaniel's. If I'm the Browns, I don't trust him at all. I mean, first of all, he didn't have a good run in Denver at, in his one shot as NFL head coach. Number two, he was signed, sealed, and delivered to Indianapolis until he wasn't. Until he crawled back to Belichick, despite the fact that he had hired assistants which, which, already. Which, by the way, was a Belichick thing when he was hired by the Jets, and then. Yeah, Belichick's an pulled that up. Yes, he has. Yeah. So I, I don't trust McDaniel's to ever leave uh, New England. Now there's hold, a very hold, hold that thought because okay. we're going to have Ryan Kavanaugh here, who's uh, okay. uh, plugged into the John Carroll situation and uh, knows all of the the uh, names and and people you're talking about. And we'll find out in the next segment after we take a break. We'll find out what Ryan Kavanaugh is thinking. We want to know what you are thinking. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. You can email us uh, during the show at uh, reallesslevine at gmail.com. I just want to thank a couple of people and uh, uh, also uh, Buffalo Wild Wings on Harvard Road at 271. We were out there last week. Had a great turnout from, uh, <coughs> excuse me, from audience members who came up and, you know, uh, we talked to people all the time and then you put a face to some of the names and that was great. We had a great turnout and we appreciate what uh, BW3 allowed us to do and uh, all of you people who came out and made it successful. We recorded two shows and aired them as quickly as we could, and uh, it was a terrific experience, and I just want to thank everybody. Our number, 216-575-0403, that is the number to call. What, did anything stun you about uh, about the weekend, um, other than Ohio State? Yeah, I haven't, he's still trying to get over that one, uh, just a, a brutal loss in the uh, CFP semifinal, but then you, yeah, you turn the page to, uh, what clearly looked like a meaningless game to the Browns because they, they they put in a minimal effort uh, as the Bengals were flying around the field for Andy Dalton. All right, we need to make to take a break here, but I want you to comment on the fact that Odell Beckham Jr. went into the game shy of uh, shy of a thousand yards of the season by what about 50 yards or so. Tell me what you thought when he made the catch oh. to put him over and then walk right off the field. <laughs> All right, I will. No, do it now. Oh. <laughs> well, he catches the pass that put him over a thousand. It yeah. wasn't the touchdown. It was a pass on right. the right sideline. Takes himself out of the game, takes his helmet off, walks along the sideline, shakes his head toward the field. Meaning, don't put me back in. I, I, who knows what he was doing? Sits down, puts a towel over his head, and the, the head shakes. Then a few plays later, he comes in. Because I was looking at the snap counts. He only missed five snaps the entire game. Well, after the game, we hear that he had food poisoning. And one report I heard was that he was uh, he had food poisoning at the very moment that he eclipsed the 1,000 yard, or that's when it hit the worst. And so he th was throwing up under the towel. Because he's Who puts a towel over their head to throw up? Well, Nobody. I, I think he needed it so he could count the yardage. I knew a guy. I played softball with the guy who had his batting average figured out by the time he got to first base. Well, you know, and I, and I, we, we do have a break soon. Yeah. All right, because I've got some stuff, some more right. stuff on Beckham that is symptomatic. All right, we'll do that. We'll do some more team. because Ryan Cavanaugh is going to join us. We'll talk about the uh, John Carroll connection. Most of it up at uh, up at uh, Green at uh, New England. We'll see what uh, he's got to say about that. And is uh, John Dorsey safe? You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. We've got a whole bunch of great uh, comments today. You know what our uh, our question was, D-Man, question of the day? What's that? What is your favorite Freddie Kitchens memory? My favorite, my most infamous is wearing the T-shirt. I mean, that to And me not is, understanding it was a problem. Yeah, I mean, that was the nature. Might have gotten, that might have been the final straw. Let's take a break. More Sports and Less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Ring in the new year at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Countdown to 2020 with fun giveaways and big winning. Then at 10 p.m., Churchill's Bourbon and Brew will be rocking with Erie's Big Three, featuring the M80's Tito Bongiorno, Geek Army's Terry Wood, and Earthquaker's Marty Cole with the Geek Army Band playing everyone's favorites. 
Tickets available at the door or at TicketWeb.com. Plus, at 9 p.m., we've got our free New Year's Eve dance party downstairs and a special buffet. Presque Isle Downs and Casino, winning any way you look at it. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory Direct. Three locations plus the great website, northeastfactorydirect.com. Dennis Maniloff, the D-man, is with us. By the way, how'd you do in your picks uh, Sunday? A decidedly average 8-8. Eight eight. But for me, 8-8 eight 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 is, is a winner. cause for it's a celebration. Full season, 16 games. Ryan yeah. Cavanaugh standing by. Ryan does a great job with us on all the uh, high school football action. Ryan, how are you? I'm great, Les. Merry Christmas, guys. Same to you. Brian. Great to have you with us because you are the uh, John Carroll expert. And you, you keep hearing about uh, John Carroll with these names pop up, but uh, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, first, uh, you got a couple of names, and uh, you see the connection there. It's, it's unbelievable. All right, let, let's start talking about him. Uh, John Carroll coaching connection here. You got Greg Roman, who's with uh, – uh, with, uh, of course, the uh, uh, Baltimore Ravens. The impressive thing about this, uh, Brian, uh, Ryan, rather, is that he's, he's changed offenses. He's done it twice and has been terrific each time. Yeah, Roman, what I like the, the most about Greg is his consistency. And, and throughout change, as you mentioned, Les, you know, you're able to adapt to not only different offenses but different style of quarterbacks and different style of play. Greg Roman has shown – uh, consistency and obviously he's older than Josh so a longer pedigree of doing it at the NFL level now Greg was gone before he was I just missed him when I played at John Carroll um, so I don't know Greg personally but uh, from guys in the NFL you know obviously he's very well respected and uh, for the Cleveland Browns to get a guy like Greg Roman I think I think that's uh, something they should be very interested in and if you can get word to him uh, not to be like Freddie and demand that you call plays, just to be the head coach, that would be a nice thing to do. Listen, Les, I, I don't want to go on a tangent, but I really believe that we're going to see a shift in the NFL in head coach, offensive coordinator, because you, like Josh, who is an outstanding offensive coordinator, I mean, arguably the best in the league with what he's done, but when he took the job out in Denver, he was never a head coach, so he didn't have that experience. And I think – you wouldn't hire a Josh McDaniels and ask him not to call plays. That would be taking his, the best uh, arrow out of his quiver. But when you wear both hats, that's a demanding and off, oftentimes what it appears to be a problematic situation, especially for a, a new head coach who may not have that head coaching experience in the locker room. All right, here you go. On, on screen, we've got uh, Josh at 43 years old, coached in the NFL since, what, 2001. Offensive coordinator with the Patriots since 2012, and was head coach uh, with the Denver Broncos, and uh, not not very good. 11 and uh, was at 11 and seven, 11 and 17 is his record there. And of course, uh, he was a he was a wide receiver at John Carroll. Well, he came in as a quarterback. He might have been, you know, and there's many reasons why Josh may be smarter than me. But after a year, we realized it was me, Casario, Nick Casario, of course, and Josh. And after one year, he realized how good Nick Casario was at quarterback and saw an immediate opportunity to get in at wide receiver, and that's why he shifted um, over to wide receiver. Nick Casario, for those that don't know, was 
a four-year starter and an All-American at John Carroll. He was, he was uh, he, I, would, I always say that Nick was about three or four inches in height short of being in the NFL. That's how good of a quarterback he was. Well, he was the director of player uh, personnel for the Patriots uh, since uh, 2008. Pretty good resume right there. Dennis Maniloff has a question for you. Uh, Ryan, go ahead, D. Uh, hi, Ryan. Um, we, we had heard on the radio today that Dustin Fox said that if, jo if Josh McDaniels were to be the Browns' choice, that John Dorsey would pretty much be on the outs because McDaniels would want his uh, power structure in place, presumably uh, Casar Casario coming along with him. Do you foresee that type of situation if uh, McDaniels were to sit down with the Browns and, and I wouldn't say make his demands, but make his strong suggestions about what he thinks needs to be done? Well, I, I, and I heard that too from Dustin, and if, if, if Josh does in fact have his front office in place, I would imagine it's one of two people. It would either be Nick, who he's very tight with, and those two, when you say they came up through the ranks, you know, Josh got into the Patriots first, and then Nick was actually doing some finance consulting at the time and brought him on board with him. So um, those guys have been with the Patriots since the beginning. But another name that I wouldn't rule out is Dave Ziegler, who uh, is uh, as well very – he's like the lowest – he's at the next level. I don't know what his official um, um, name is for the Patriots, what his job title is. But he also played at John Carroll with us. He was a receiver, a kick returner. He's in the John Carroll Football Hall of Fame, and he is very close with Josh. Again, one of his best friends. Um, but I would have to believe that if there's a name, if Josh says, and I, and I don't know this from either of those two guys, but if Josh says, I'm, I have my own people, you know, if Nick wants to leave New England, I think Casario would be the guy. But, I, you know, Ziggler's a dark horse for that candidacy. All right, so what, is, what happens uh, here with uh, John Dorsey, with uh, – uh, Paul, uh, Paul D. Podesta, what, what happens with these guys who supposedly were the, the future of the franchise uh, uh, in the front office? Well, the musical chairs at the coaching position, in my opinion, Les, means that your next coach is going to have to say with what he wants. The, the Cleveland Browns are not in a position to say, we want you as our head coach, but you have to keep the GM and the, and the, you know, the front office structure. And if, you, if, it, if that's what Josh McDaniels wants and you think Josh McDaniels is your coach, I think Dorsey's on the outside looking in. I don't see any other way you can do that, Les. I don't think no, I agree with you. Well, so what does that mean for his number one pick, Baker Mayfield? What does that mean there? Well, I don't think you can give up on Baker just yet. I don't, you know, I, I, if, if it's Josh and if it's Casario, I think it's the Patriot way. Uh, with regard to quarterbacks, which means you take another, you draft another quarterback this year. One of the things that they've been consistent on is always having a, a, a backup quarterback, a mid-round guy, a Brissett, a, a Matt C Castle, who they groom, and they put him into a situation where he could be the starter if they need him. And I don't, I don't know that the Browns have that right now. So I think that would be one of the first orders of business is to get another guy, and then Josh or whoever, if, if it is Josh, then you have a year to, to decide – is Baker Mayfield the guy? Quarterback, again, here's another tangent left, but very few guys come in and light the league on fire like Patrick Mahomes. A lot of quarterbacks, it takes them two, three years to figure it out, and that's what I see with Baker Mayfield. I don't see the, the switches on his mental computer firing uh, the, as fast as they need to be to read a defense, to understand where the ball needs to go, and to get it there on time. Plus, but, this, will, plus this will be his third head coach in three years. You've got to cut Baker some slack. And there hasn't been consistent with consistency with the wide receivers, the offensive, as you said, the head coach, the offensive play calling. You know, you're, you're throwing an awful lot on this guy's plate, and unfortunately, I mean, that's the quarterback position, right? You get your name in the paper, and you also yeah. catch the flack when the team's not going well. Ryan, my final question to you is, what is in or was in the water at John Carroll in the 90s? <laughs> uh, you got... These football trees that uh, that sprung up with John Carroll, it's incredible to think. How about Tom Arth, was, uh, I mean, who's at Akron now, was uh, a backup to Peyton Manning? Yeah, I mean, it, it, not just the 90s, of course, but the John Carroll football tree is remarkable. Uh, it, it is. Well, uh, you know, we were watching Notre Dame the other day, and Greg Polian is the, the former head coach at Nevada. Of course, he's Bill Polian's son, and uh, he's the special teams coach at Notre Dame. That was you know, you look at two p key pieces for the roots, so to speak, and one of them would be Bill Polian, and that's where Greg Roman and, and his son Brian come from. 
Um, and Caldwell, you know, David Caldwell, who I believe may still be with the uh, he's with the, the Bucks or the uh, Chargers in the front office. And then you've got um, Josh McDaniels, who, you know, through, I, I think, a lot through his father, who was the, obviously a legendary coach of Kent McKinley and New Saban and, and uh, you know, these sorts of people that got Josh to kick started. But when you look back at it, you know, it, it's really something incredible. Nick, Nick Casario, you know, he actually, small world, he went to Saginaw Valley and he coached my brother and also a guy named Matt LaFleur. Oh, jeez. Are you serious? Coach at the Green- yeah, honest to God. Nick oh. Casario coached. He was a grad assistant at Saginaw Valley. My younger brother was a captain, and his roommate was Matt LaFleur. So, you, wow. Nick, Nick, if he didn't decide to go the and, – and for a long time, I don't know if people know this either, but I think even until today, Nick Casario coaches during camp along with being in the front office. He'll go out and be a position player, a coach. He's throwing routes. And he's on the headset, I believe. Even till today, I believe he's on the headset with Josh during wow. games. Wow. I never never knew that. It's incredible hey, stuff. Hey, Ryan, thanks. Great stuff. Uh, it's, uh, John Carroll football is it's just a phenomenal st- a story that I don't think the, the nation knows about, really. when you Everybody knows Bill Belichick and, and all that, but uh, I'm, I think they'd be surprised what little old John Carroll has done, starting with Don Shula way back when. Yeah, and if I could, last before I go, i got to give a shout-out to the godfather of this all. That's Coach Perella, Joe Perella, who was in the quarterback room with me, Nick, and Josh, and uh, so much of the knowledge you see the Patriots doing. And both those guys would give a lot of credit to Coach Perella as well. But he, he And last thing I'll say, when, when Coach Art took the spot with Akron, there were three people there with him. It was Nick Restifo, his offensive coordinator at St. Ignatius, a guy named Bernie Kozar knows a thing about the position, and the third one's the godfather of it all, Joe Perella from John Carroll. Wow. Well, That's thanks awesome so stuff. much. Uh, and Ryan, by the way, you're part of that tree too, man. You are the man. <laughs> you know what? You know, every time you have a tree and there's like a little rotten apple that kind of falls and rolls <laughs> to the side and nobody wants to pick it, that I, might just be me. Dad. I got to tell you something. I just had a conversation with somebody about Joe Perella, and you can't talk about that guy without a smile on your face. Oh, listen, we still lift at the same gym, and I'll go to work out. And it'll be an hour and a half later, my wife will say, what took you so long? And I won't have broken a sweat. And I said, Coach Pro was there, and I talked to him as long as he'll let, let me listen to him yeah. talk. Wow. Great guy. Thanks Phenomenal so much, Phenomenal stuff, Ryan. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on short notice. Appreciate it very much. Happy New Year, guys. Thanks for having same me. Same to you. Same to you, Ryan Kavanaugh. Great That's stuff. That's just no phenomenal. No about yeah. that. I mean, and what? here's the thing. LaFleur is a little bit of an indictment on McCarthy. Because you see LaFleur yes. come in first year. Doing as well or better. And they're the second seed in yeah. the NFC. And you go, wait a minute, how good is Mike McCarthy? 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine uh, at gmail.com. This is Les Levine coming uh, to talk to you about Northeast Factory Direct, east, west, and south. they got the three great locations plus northeastfactorydirect.com. I've been telling you about it for quite some time, and uh, I want to remind you what a great story it is. Alex started it 20 years ago, started the company out of his small garage in Lakewood, a single dining room set. That was it. He had no idea of of how it worked out, but uh, he had very little overhead, and he said, you know what, this is a great business plan. Now, 20 years later, look what he's got, northeastfactorydirect.com. We'll come back. We'll talk uh, to you. One line's open if you'd like to get in, 216 575 0403. We'll take a look at some other coaching uh, candidates and your thoughts. More sports and less living continues with the D man Dennis Mandeloff exclusively on Cleveland.com. It's your basement ready for the holidays. There was moisture in the basement, it ruined the carpeting, the smell was terrible. We didn't feel safe in our own basement, and that's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. National holidays expert Mary Mary here with a list of holidays you won't want to miss. Get your Ohio Lottery Merry Million scratch-offs for National Donut Day, National Have a Party with Your Bear Day, Pickle Day, National Unique Talent Day, Take a Hike Day, and America's favorite, National Jukebox Day. 
every day is a reason to celebrate. Grab a Merry Millions and other Ohio Lottery holiday scratch-offs today. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Time for a How Come Quickie. This is my daughter's How Come Quickie today, D-Man. How come when the Haslam's clean houses, they start with the kitchens? There yeah, you go. That's a good one. The uh, Les Levine tree. Appropriate. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. How good is Ryan Cavanaugh with that information? He's tremendous, and he got me thinking, Les. Imagine if this is taking place in the, uh, in the headquarters in Berea. The Haslam's want... McDaniels and all that comes with them, which would mean Dorsey's rendered moot. Yep. Uh, De Podesta, the chief operations officer, the analytics guy, he wants Stefanski, he, and he, he's and he crawling for quite some time. He's crawling because he's saying, basically, I told you so. The Kitchens wasn't the guy, right? And Dorsey wants McCarthy. I mean, imagine if that's the case. I don't know that to be true and for sure, but imagine if you have three different preferred candidates amongst and, Dee Podesta and, and Dorsey and Haslam. And what we think we know about Haslam is he has so many guys that he talks to that sometimes the last guy he talks to is the one who wins. <laughs> Let's talk about some other candidates yeah. for the Browns. Let's take a look first at uh, uh, Robert, I believe it's pronounced Soleil. Soleil. Yeah. yeah. There he's, you go. A, he's a tough dude, man. He's got that Niners defense. Ripping and snorting. Speaking of the, Niner, the Niners defense, what about that last play last night? Dude, what I did mean, you say? It affected five teams? Yeah, it, it was within inches of changing the outcomes for at least, I think, five teams in the uh, NFC, or basically just the entire NFC playoff structure Absolutely. was hinging on that one like play. Like three inches at the end. Yeah, incredible. Was all and done. Uh, all right, Mike McCarthy, everybody knows about him, uh, Green Bay Packers. Started coaching in the NFL back in 93. And he desperately brings a Super Bowl title to the proceedings. And, and some people, That's a big heard, check in his, bo in his I, plus yeah, box. I heard some people on radio saying, well, he didn't want to come here last year. He didn't want to come anywhere last year. Didn't even want to talk about any openings. I think he just wanted to well, sit back and Well, and I also out. heard that part of the reason McCarthy was lukewarm is because the organization was high on kitchens. They, they wanted Kitchens and he, and he to, to remain as a play caller, and McCarthy's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Kevin Stefanski is a name we've heard quite a bit, and you say that uh, that's Dee Podesta's guy, right? Well, that's what it seems like, um, but I'll tell you this. I think it's going to be tough for any of the coordinators who haven't been head coaches. As much as I like Roman, maybe as much as I would like Stefanski, because you heard, you saw the code words in the Haslam statement about strong head coach. Right. It, it, it appears to me like the Haslam's want somebody who has a resume as an NFL head coach. All right, here's a resume. It's not an NFL coach. It's one we are all familiar with. <laughs> Urban Meyer, what do you think? I knew you'd put him up on the board. I think he is the right man for the <laughs> Dallas, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, not the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I think the Browns need either a Greg Roman or a uh, a guy with a Super Bowl. I would have hoped Super Bowl appearance Rivera, but it looks like he's gone to the Redskins. Uh, Herb, I just don't see it here, but for some reason I see it in Dallas. What do you see about this guy coming up from the uh, state up north? <laughs> what do you think? I just hope that Michigan signs Harbaugh to a lifetime contract. 
So Ohio State can, <laughs> can keep teeing off on him. Um, I think he's he going five against. He the missed his chance. Unless he totally bleeds maize and blue, he missed his chance. He could have been the coach of the Indianapolis Colts, but then again, maybe he would say, "I didn't I, miss my chance because luck was going down at that point." I the, the job went to Reich. He and his family were Cleveland Browns fans growing up, but. Uh, do you think he'd want to coach against his brother twice a year? I, I don't think he would. Uh, they would coach against each other in the Super Bowl. As ornery as Jim Harbaugh is, I think he would relish the opportunity to try to beat his brother, especially to get payback for uh, the Super Bowl loss. All right, staying in the college ranks, take a look at this uh, name here, Lincoln Riley. What do you think now? No, and no, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't see it happening. I think Riley's going to stay put in Oklahoma. I think he loves Oklahoma too much. How about seven giving up seven touchdowns to Burrow in the first half? Yeah, yeah, you could say that's a, a dent in, in his resume, but a lot of people would say just the fact that he's gotten them into the playoffs, uh, what is it, three years in a row, yeah. uh, is a uh, is a huge uh, attribute. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. This is our last uh, show of the, of the calendar year. We'll be off uh, tomorrow, of course, with the... Uh, New Year's Eve and uh, New Year's Day on Wednesday, and then we'll be back on Thursday night with uh, Bud Shaw right here on, uh, exclusively on Cleveland.com. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Tri-C. Uh, you can explore your uh, interests and find a program that puts you on the path to a bright future. Tri-C more, has more than 1,000 a, a courses in, uh, and over 140 career and uh, other choices. Try them out at Tri-C. Dot com, uh, uh, edu dot com for more information. We'll come back in a moment. Presque Isle uh, Casino and uh, and uh, track that now takes uh, sports betting. The man you can go in, go to one of the kiosks, you can bet on all the uh, all, bet the, all the games, games I picked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't think they should say, "Well, D-Man called me and said I, I should uh, bet on this, on this particular don't. team." Please don't. I right, check that out. That's coming up. Uh, this what you see there. The uh, Mardi Gras and the dance party. That'll be, of course, on uh, New Year's Eve. We'll come on back in a moment. We'll uh, find out uh, what happened in the Fiesta Bowl. Ohio State, uh, tough, a great game, actually. We'll talk about that and more. Horrible uh, call. I hate to blame it on the refs, but there was a horrible call on that. I think three steps is, do you need more than three steps inbounds to have a, a play called I your way? I thought three was the magic number. And yeah, that was I thought it was four. one. Yeah, and this was... is almost four. We'll come on back in a moment with the D man, Dennis Maniloff. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four year university, but I decided to come to Tri C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. This portion of uh, More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory Direct. All right, how about this for this date in history, sports history? 2008, Mike Shanahan gets fired by the Broncos. 2013, Mike Shanahan gets fired by the Washington Redskins. That might, uh, that might be one of Brian's greatest uh, today <laughs> in sports histories. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
216-575-0403 is the number to call. That, uh, that uh, element brought to you by our friends at Smiley One Heating and Cooling and Plumbing. All right, uh, the Fiesta Bowl. Great theater in that one. Unbelievable. You had theater. to bring that up, didn't yeah. you, Les? Well, oh, my still goodness still bothering me. Gracious. I hate to blame oh. it on calls. I'll tell you what, what did bother me, and I know here, here you see the recap of what it was. I was concerned about one thing. This is the first game that Ryan Day had where the game was still on the line, and he made a call that I thought was terrible. It, I've been told, don't worry about it. It didn't change the game. But you can't see calls like this. I'm talking about he takes the lead uh, and up by one point, and he's got to go for two in that situation. Yeah. If, he, if he misses it, so what? You're, you're up by one. If he makes it, you're up by three, and you don't get beat by a field goal, which he could have could have happened. Ryan Day, to me, was basically the perfect coach up until that night. He made several mistakes, I think. One of them was the decision to rush the punter when they're punting from inside their 10-yard line right. and you're still in control of the game. There's absolutely no reason to rush the punter there. They get the roughing the punter penalty and uh, Clemson turns it into well, a touchdown. I think he was worried about the injuries. What injury? He had his uh, great running back with the injuries. Well, and Dobbins and, yeah, but you, you knew Dobbins. Dobbins was banged up. You knew uh, Fields was banged up, but you're still in control of the game there. Yeah. There's no – let them punt. The fair catch turned out to be at the 40-yard line. Yeah. You were, it was going to be your best field position, starting field position, basically of the night. And why you rush the punter there is, is beyond me. But it was a the, – the problem with that game, Les, is it was a combination of factors. Several head scratching decisions by day. Uh, Dobbins, uncharacteristically, as great as he is, drops the, uh, the the screen pass to the left. Doesn't secure the touchdown pass to the right on that little flip. Yeah. Where I think what he was doing on the dive is he was thinking as a running back would, which is extend the ball and put it down on the ground. But he was a receiver at that point. He had to finish the catch, so he didn't bother. You know, he didn't scoop underneath it. So uncharacteristic mistakes by Dobbins. Olave cutting off his route on yeah. the final pass. Why? I have no idea. Uh, the defense giving up big plays. And, as you said, some inexplicable replay now, stuff. Yeah, there's a horrible non-call. Um, again, I'm not blaming the loss on Ryan Day. I'm just saying that no. I hope he learns from that. Somebody's got to tell him you got to go for two in that situation. Yeah, it, 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 it wasn't Day's greatest performance. And yet, here's the thing. And, and by the way, you, you saw the graphic? If you would have told me before the game that Ohio State is going to have 500-plus <laughs> yards of total offense, I would have said to you they're going to score. They're going to hang 45 to 50 on Clemson and win this game going away. And instead, they don't win. And they score in the 20s. All right, we're getting news, uh, breaking news. Uh -oh. Dobbins is going to apply for the draft. Dobbins? Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, I, had, I thought so. I thought he would. He should try to cash in on this amazing season. I hope his ankle's okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, he's been a phenomenal back this year. Let's go to the phones. Let's go all the way to California. Hello, uh, Mike, go ahead. You're on uh, More Sports and Less Levine with the D-man, Dennis Manilov. Thank you guys. I'm a Cleveland Browns fan of 55 years. The silver lining of this whole season was you guys, you know, Les, D-Man, uh, Jim Donovan, Mary Kay, Hoingy. Thank you guys. I am not suffering alone, and that always helps. Uh, I like to put a kitchen fire. Wait, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Wait, hold on, Mike. Right. Mike, said, hold, Mike, hold on. I don't know about Freddie, and you were right. Fire them all. Fire the defensive coordinator. He's terrible. I don't even know what our offensive coordinator does. Well, it's interesting. The names that you mentioned, except for Jim Donovan, who's from New England, I think everybody else who covers the team is, is from here, and it hurts hurts more. It yeah. does. I mean, it's not a prerequisite to, to be local and, and cover the Browns, but uh, we happen to be that way. And, yeah, it stings. I mean, I remember living and dying with every single Browns game and every single Indians game, every single Cavs game as a kid. So... Uh, this one hurts. Uh, listen, it's a sad day. When a Browns head coach gets fired, it's a sad day. It's not cause for, for applause. But at least the Haslam's recognized they made a mistake or John and they made a mistake. It was almost impossible to, to justify keeping them. Right, but here's the thing. They learned from the, the 
the uh, Jackson debacle. Right. And they said, you know what? We can't do this again. We can't give them another year. Mike, anything else? Yeah, one more thing. Wow, it's Nature Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Mike. And, and Mike, uh, Mike's right about this, though. It's not just going to be Kitchens. I mean, his staff is is gone, you know, by sure. and large. I, I don't know who they're going to retain uh, at that, uh, you know, who would who would stay? I mean, once in a while, the special teams coach survives these coaching it's, it's purges. Usually, it's usually a guy, if it's a, if it's a new coach comes in, it's not a veteran head coach who has guys' uh, names in his hip pocket. Right, and let me just say this, Les. Let me, i got to be very clear about this. We, we, we were doing this on the post-game show, doing it in the pod. Getting rid of Freddie Kitchens does not, is not going to solve all your problems, Okay. And Freddie Kitchens is not the sole reason that the Browns went 6-10. and 10. Correct. The players must look in the mirror and say, did I do everything I could for, for us to win games? Uh, you think of Miles Garrett. I mean, Miles Garrett, he skated largely in terms of blame for this season, as far as I know. Sure. But you can pin an awful lot of blame on Miles Garrett yeah, if you'd like. Absolutely, and you wonder about Njoku, you wonder about Hollywood Higgins. What was that all about? Well, yeah, and I mean, you could say, well, that was Kitchens related, but uh, Baker Mayfield, just because you think Freddie Kitchens was a bad coach doesn't absolve Baker Mayfield of being one of the worst uh, ranked quarterbacks in the NFL this year. Hi, this is Les Levine from Northeast Factory Direct, East, West, and uh, and South. Of course, uh, West 140th Street, uh, the old B&B Appliance Building in Euclid, and uh, Freeway uh, Drive, that's in Macedonia, and uh, NortheastFactoryDirect.com. Uh, they're celebrating 20 years in the business, started in that garage we talked about. They have a garage uh, sale event, uh, and... Uh, Go check it out at all locations all month long, anytime, and they wish you a very happy new year at northeastfactorydirect.com. Sokolowski's University, and they had a great article about them in the Play Dealer in Cleveland.com about the uh, new uh, organ player or uh, piano player that they've hired. He's terrific. He does a terrific job on Friday and Saturday nights and uh, Monday through Friday, 11 to 3 for lunch, Friday and Saturdays for dinner. That's where you find Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn. Same location since 1923. We'll come on back. We'll talk about the birthday boy, LeBron James, and more. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Get your garage ready for the holidays. We had some cracks in the floor. We needed to enhance the beauty of it. That's when we called Nature Stone. Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete, so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. And with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. the new year at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Countdown to 2020 with fun giveaways and big winning. Then at 10 p.m., Churchill's Bourbon and Brew will be rocking with Erie's Big Three featuring the M80's Tito Bongiorno, Geek Army's Terry Wood, and Earthquaker's Marty Coe with the Geek Army Band playing everyone's favorites. Tickets available at the door or at TicketWeb.com. Plus, at 9 p.m., we've got our free New Year's Eve dance party downstairs and a special buffet. Presque Isle Downs and Casino, winning any way you look at it.
D-Man, this date in Les Levine history, December 30th, 2016. Les uh, goes on the air and suggests that it might be a bad idea to accept a ride offer from Mike Shanahan on December 30th. He got fired on two different December 30ths. Yeah, but his son's doing just fine yeah. at uh, in the 49 and with the 49ers. If he had stayed here, who knows? To what think that he would was have in been. the building a few years ago. Birthdays for today. This wow! Is, this is one of the greatest. Look at this days. lineup: Sandy Koufax, oh, oh, Mel man. Renfro, Stand Up, Tiger Woods, LeBron James, and Carson Wentz. This might be the best birthday date of all time. <laughs> You're going to love this. We went back in history. Dave Bacon uh, produced a piece on LeBron James when he was a freshman in high school. Take a look at this. You could have, you could have, there we go. It's been a perfect season for the St. Vincent St. Mary Fighting Irish. Undefeated, nationally ranked, and in the Division Three State Final Four. A key reason is the outstanding efforts of six foot, five inch freshman, LeBron James. LeBron is a multifaceted player. The best thing about him, I think, is he just has great instincts for the game. He can really pass the ball, and he does a lot of things well. It feels good to be a freshman coming in here and playing real good. Everybody, they just accepted who I am and what I can do. They they want the ball in me, Ali, and Mav's hand in the clutch. LeBron has been so good, he leads the Irish in every offensive category, averaging over 18 points, six assists, and eight rebounds a game. It's rare when a freshman has any impact on a varsity team. But LeBron isn't just any freshman. I just wanted to play good, play good team ball. I really didn't care about my stats. I was just winning. He has unlimited potential because he, he has the ability to learn. He, uh, he knows what his weaknesses are. And I think anytime you know your strengths and your weaknesses and you have that ability to learn and understand that, you have a, you have a chance really to be a great, great player. On the football field, LeBron also excelled for the Irish. He teamed up with Maverick Carter at wide receiver to form one of the area's most formidable duos catching the football. They helped the Irish qualify in the Division Three state playoffs. He started for us the last half of the season. He was as good as our senior receivers, if not better. He gets to the ball, which is amazing on some of the catches he makes. He just goes and gets it. I've been playing football since I was nine and basketball. I just started playing sports since I was nine. And I've been liking football as much as basketball. I just want to keep playing off in my high school career and just play, play to my capabilities. Despite being an underclassman, LeBron leads by example, not only athletically, but in the classroom as well. He carries above a 3.3 grade point average. Both on and off the court, the sky really is the limit for LeBron's accomplishments over the next four years. He's a, really a fantastic person. He's a great kid. He, he enjoys just life in general. He's very, very team oriented. He's very well liked at the school. He's got a bubbly personality. Uh, he's just been a pleasure to be around. I want to be a role model. I like want people, like when I get old, I want little kids to look up to me too, like they do in the pros. I like just to be, be who I am and just be friends with everybody and just help people who need help. That's, That's just phenomenal. That is the best. Great job by and, Dave Bacon. Yeah, Dave Bacon knows these guys before they're yeah. stars, and I mean, it doesn't get any how, better how about, than that. How about Keith Dambrot? And hey, Keith Dambrot, I mean, you know, Dave Bacon doing a feature on a ninth grade LeBron. Oh, by the way, playing football as well. I just, you know, and you, you th look, I've had my quibbles with LeBron in certain areas, but there's no doubt he's just a, you know, a mega, mega, mega star, and just, you know, came from the humble beginnings. Yeah, well, the kid the from mega Akron. star, the male athlete of the decade, and wow. the. Uh, the tattoo uh, says uh, he has his uh, birth date on it. Established. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I think it's like Akron established uh, December 30th, 1984. We didn't see if he had on his back shoulder the uh, chosen, yeah. the chosen one. Just uh, remarkable. Absolutely. How, how about the Sandy Co Koufax? What a day! Birthday yeah. days. And and Eldrick and, and Tiger yeah. Woods, you know, rediscovering the magic. I want him to be the permanent captain of the uh, President's Cup and Ryder Cup teams for as long as he wants. If you can't catch us uh, during the show, which airs live from 6 until 7 p.m., you can use the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Here you see the number, 216-266-50. Call anytime, leave us a message, and we will play it on the air. 216-575-0403. We're going to take a look at uh, what you, how you responded to the uh, question of the day on Facebook. I wonder also, what the question of the day was. Also, <laughs> also uh, here, what is your favorite Freddy Kitchens memory? Oh, There's some good right. ones here. That's right, you asked more that. Also some quickies. More Sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. 
get your basement ready for the holidays. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. D-Man checking, uh, email. what do you got there, anything good? Seeing if there's up? any uh, reports of any coaches moving. or Nothing happening today? No, nothing, that, well, this minute. All right. All right, so the question of the day on Facebook was, uh, what's your favorite Freddie Kitchen's memory? Natalie says, uh, well, when uh, first hired, his, uh, his sincere appreciation of the Cleveland fans, which uh, I had my uh, favorite <laughs> memory directly related to the game, uh, Aaron Wood says, uh, in all press conferences, I can remember that he had uh, him saying that we were only focused on this week and going 1-0. and Larry Pantages said when he, when he said, our team looks good on paper and uh, would have believed it's uh, more like Chris Palmer's runaway train after that. Chris Ard watching him carry his belongings to his car last night. It's a good moment. Len Berger hearing the news last night that Freddie was uh, fired. Gerard Morelli <coughs> hearing that he was fired. Charles Borg, him leaving Berea. There's a theme here. And Rick May says, uh, looking at him, regardless of the situation, I always think he looks like comedian Larry the Cable Guy. Hey, look, I, I don't rejoice in anybody losing no. their job because I don't want uh, somebody to say that I should lose my job. But the nature of professional sports is that, you know, these guys know what they sign up for. Yep. They know that they are going to potentially be fired and if in, a record is not very good. And in Freddie's case, there's no way he's a head coach anywhere else. Uh, you wouldn't in the NFL. think so. He's a football lifer, though. He'll probably yeah, latch he on somewhere yeah. as a uh, as an assistant somewhere. Uh, maybe he reunites with Arians or something. But uh, speaking of Arians, boy, that's a guy I'd love to have here. Yeah, no holds barred he, in this evaluation of Jameis Winston. Let's uh, let's go to Walt, who's in Dayton. Walt, go ahead. You're on uh, more sports and less Levine. Gentlemen, happy New Year to you. Same to you, Walt. To you too, Walt. My question is, uh, why haven't the, anyone brought up uh, the New Orleans Saints offensive coordinator, Carmichael? I mean, he's worked of? well with shorter quarterbacks. Yeah. He, Unless everybody know in the league that he's not going anywhere. How come his name is not being mentioned more? Well, I don't know for sure, but maybe some people think that Peyton is the guy really running the show there offensively. Is that a possible explanation? How long has he been down there, Walt? He's been down there as long as Sean Peyton's been there. Is that right? And that's the thing. You took, you took the assistant assistant to LSU, and now they're looking to be number one in the nation. Yeah. So, and they're running New Orleans offense. So, there got to be something to the pudding somewhere. I, I'm just wondering why he doesn't even get a look. Yeah, it, a, it, he doesn't even get a mention because I haven't seen his name anywhere in the last couple of years. There you go. Yeah. Great job by Walt. All right, Walt, great call. Up. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Happy thank New you. Year to you. Before we get into how come quickies, you got any comment you want to get that you haven't gotten tonight? No, I'll leave, I'll leave the OBJ stuff to the dustbin. All right, well, you gotta, you got you to gotta grade these. All right. It's a very important part of your job. 
Yeah, I got the uh, wrong marker to do it. This from Tom Randazzo. Good evening, Les and D-Man. Hopefully the new coach will go forward without OBJ. I never wanted him for all the obvious reasons that he showed this year. 100% agree. Boy, but when he makes catches like he makes, you say if you could just harness Every that. good receiver in the league makes a catch like he made yesterday. You think? He's not the only one who does it. Huh. That's East, my whole point. East Side Eddie. Isn't it time the Browns stop bringing in the coordinator of the year and offering an OJT program on the job training, I assume? They need an experienced head coach, not a trainee. Rivera would have been great here, but he's, uh, but he's going to uh, uh, Washington. McCarthy would be good, too. How did, Grace work, how did Gase work out? And Patricia? Most coordinators that become head coaches lose two to three years as they learn how to, how to leave the assistant mentality behind and become the boss. Kitchens wanted to be their pal. He needed to be their boss. That I think that, that is a phenomenal yeah. email. That's a phenomenal email. That's exactly right. He Kitchens. There's a fine line you have to walk when you're trying to be a player's coach. Right. Kitchens crossed over that line so far he could never recover. And but that was one of the main reasons he was chosen. So they didn't work. They didn't fi figure that out uh, correctly. Uh, Mitch from Kendo, I just met the other night at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. It was a thrill to meet you and Bud at the BW3. Thank you for your hospitality. I also meant to ask you, well, I, I don't want to mention the name, but I think he's been gone three to four years, uh, for the question you're asking, but if you don't mind, I'd rather not mention it. Um, not only is my short-term memory horrible, uh, so is my short-term memory. <laughs> it sounded short tricky, but... <laughs> what was the last part? Short-term yeah, For His short-term memory is horrible, and so is his short-term memory. <laughs> well done. Uh, Tom Triner with the quickie. I know it sounds crazy, but how come the Browns have to have a head coach? Why can't there just be an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, <laughs> and position coaches? That's funny. <laughs> that's Tim and Kent. Could avoid a hiring and a firing. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, this from Big Ed. How come when my ex-wife said you'll never find anybody like me again, I said that's the point? Uh, how come when the teacher asked Johnny to spell Mississippi, he said the state or the river? <laughs> that's good. That's a nine. That is a nine. That's that's pretty good. Uh, Mr. Gullible, who was out there the other night also. Oh, this is a biblical, biblical uh, how come I still be? don't know what Gullible looks like. About what you think. How come there's a, there is safety in numbers, but everything began in Genesis? Little biblical thing. I, you know, baseball was first conceived in the, uh, in the Bible. Are you aware of that? I was not. In the, right at the beginning in Genesis, it said, in the big inning. Oh, my God. You did not just do that, Mr. Les. Gullible oh says, how come, unlike Freddie gracious. Kitchens, Les should give his beard another season? <laughs> Maybe next year. It did come in good, I must admit. Everybody loved it, except my wife, which tells you why it's not on anymore. <laughs> John Patrick, how come my wife always lets me have her way? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on between husbands and yeah. ex-wives and wives here. <laughs> All right, that's it for us tonight, our last live show of the year. We'll be back Thursday night with Bud Shaw. Happy New Year to you and Denise and the kids and all that. Great job all year and all decade or however long you've been here. Thanks, Any Les. idea? Yeah, the, it's been since the 90s. But, Since yeah, thank 90s. you so much for having me uh, right. all these years. And Happy New Year to everybody out there. Uh, as Camino would say, stay safe out there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right, that'll do it for us. Thanks to the D-Man. Thanks to our crew in the back that did a great job, as always, by the way. We'll see you on Thursday night. Happy New Year to all of you of all the shows I've ever done. This was the most recent. <laughs>